It's a marvelous weekend here on Project Fast Fish at Mike's Motor Works. And uh, yeah, we got a lot of things we need to cover. But first, let's get to the intro. You saw on the last episode, especially if you've been following things sequentially with the build progress of Project Fast Fish, that we yanked out the old wheel wells, that we fit up the new ones to make sure everything was kind of fit. Well, I went ahead and welded things in, and I'm going to go ahead and show that footage right now. Now, while this footage is rolling, I went ahead and, and as you can see here, I had uh, Little John help me out with a lot of... Uh, the final fitting and what have you. And uh, he was a good second set of eyes for this part of the process because I was really, really leery about it. There's been a lot of uh, concern with getting the wheel wells in just right, so on and so forth. So I chose my key points based off of what made sense with the measurements and all that kind of good stuff as far as where things align and what have you. And those key points were at the front and the back of the wheel well itself. And uh, there was a couple of gaps with the um, uh, top portion, but everything else fit up right, if that makes any sense. So um, if there's anything that would be wrong, I should be able to do some minor adjustments to make that quarter panel fit in. Now, I do not have a quarter panel, and I'll get to that in just a few moments, but um, because I didn't have a quarter panel, I went ahead and welded things in, okay, and I know, I get it, once they're welded in, they are set, and I'm pretty confident things will work out because we're within maybe a quarter inch to an eighth of an inch, and I even just eyeballed the old panel that I yanked out and um, put it up against there, and everything seemed to be in alignment within... Um, well, what should give me alignment with the uh, new panels when they get in there? Now, this is the first time I had done anything like plug welding as far as on a vertical surface. Um, so I did have the wire speed and the heat up a little bit, which caused some problems. And then I turned the heat down, but didn't decrease the wire speed, which caused some problems. So uh, these welds aren't perfect, but they are holding in and um, I know you don't have to grind in this area because no one's going to see anything back here especially when you get the quarter panel on but I went ahead and I'm um, going to go ahead and grind those after I get some panels removed where it's easier to get in there with the grinder or the die grinder etc and I didn't weld on the uh, top um, roof support that goes from the outer wheel well up to the roof support because that will be replaced in the next few episodes. So let's see where things kind of currently stand with the car. As you can see, the wheel wells are in. Um, I just showed the video for us doing that process. And there's still a couple things I gotta clean up. You know, come, down, come back and grind some of these spot welds down or where they had a little bit of the, the, um, the molten lava, or not the molten lava, the molten metal from the um, uh, uh, process there of using that spot welder. I only have a little tiny spot welder. It's not a big, they don't have big heads. It's got a pointy head on it. So when I, when it pinches together, it tends to want to melt through the metal. Maybe I'm just holding onto it too, too tight. I got to figure that part out, right? And I got a couple little things to fix up here and there and what have you. I got a couple little extra spot things I need to spot weld down like that part right there needs to be down and what have you. But I can't get to it right now because one, this is in the way, right? This little trunk support bracket brace thingy, right? And of course, this quarter panel is in the way as well, right? And it's time for this to come out. So you're gonna see me cut this out here in a few minutes. Now, when I'm cutting this out, I am not gonna remove this front portion right here. And the reason I'm not gonna do that just yet, right, is because I wanna make sure that when I get my doors reskin because my doors will be reskinned, right? I got to hang the doors and I need something to align the doors next to. And you see, I've got a couple of different alignment points right in this area right here that I could use. There's a clear angle there so that tells me roughly where I'm at aligned. And then once I get the doors in, that'll give me something to align the quarters to and make my adjustments, so on and so forth, instead of just slapping it on there. So I want to make sure that I do that. So what I'm cutting, I'll be doing removing this section 
back, right? Um, this right here is from a uh, patch that was done back in the day. And you see where I tried to unlead everything here, right? Where I used some heat and a scraper to kind of unlead everything. But uh, yeah, things, I couldn't get very far because of this panel or plate that some body man over the year put over this uh, piece. I guess dad had hired out um, some body work in the past because there was some bubbling that was going on here. And I guess they put this panel over it and what have you. So I've got to cut this guy out uh, in order to get the rest of the quarter out and of course to get to those spot welds behind the plate there. So I'm hoping it's not leaded back there. If it is, oh boy, that's going to be a nightmare, right? But I'm going to cut out around and so on to get this panel out, right? Now, when I get this out, I'll also be able to take out the tail panel, okay? This tail light panel is shot, so it's time to go ahead and remove that, right? So I can just cut that out. I am gonna keep some things for reference, so no big deal there. And I do have a new um, under or back panel, this brace bra or bracket, I'm not sure the technical name off the top of my head, uh, that piece that goes across here, right? So that's gonna be getting a new one of those, right? So you'll be seeing, you'll be seeing me make some strategic cuts for that. Now, previously I'd already used a plasma cutter to kind of cut out around there and use some other cutouts back there, but now it's time to cut a little further back. I do have new brackets for these right here. These are like a little a, um, filler bracket between that front panel and the tail light panel and the trunk deck extensions, but I really can't put that in until such time as I get the tail light panel in to see how everything lines up. So you can kind of see here that, you know, everything kind of needs to be fit together, working together to ensure that I have good alignment, right? Which is also why I'm glad I went ahead and put these in to begin with. Now, as you can see, we do have a trunk deck missing. So I am going to go ahead and start prepping for our trunk deck. So back to what we're talking about over here, I'll be making some strategic cuts to get this piece out, the taillight panel, the rest of the trunk and that uh, connector br bracket back there, right? Um, I'm going to try to salvage the uh, uh, the brace here, this uh, trunk support brace where it grows from the fuel bracket, this little brace right here, okay? Um, I'm going to try to salvage that the best I can, um, and hopefully I'll be able to do that. Um, a couple little fillers and maybe some cut some new metal in there and weld new metal in there and we'll be all right. And then of course, under here, I'm not sure if we can see in here with the light and all, right? The sail panel will eventually come out, so I'm not worried about that. I'm gonna go ahead and yank out this little torsion bar thingy right here. And then I'm gonna get um, access underneath here to the underside of the package tray. That way I could descale that and get some primer on that, what have you. I'm not gonna do a full get it down to bare metal because I don't believe it's needed. I believe all I need to do is go ahead and take the wire wheel and the surface conditioning pads and go ahead and just yank off some of that um, primer that is uh, kind of uh, hanging out, a little excess primer, if you will and then uh, knock that off, get you know a really, really thin layer there uh, down to near bare metal and then prime over that and I should be okay. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the forward package tray itself, right? Now, with everything being out of it, I'm no longer worried about bracing and supporting because I got my braces and supports installed here. So I can go ahead and yank this guy out, this support system here, this structure system here that I welded in a little while back and I'll be able to start test fitting that trunk panel as well. And there's some other busy work I gotta get to as well because there's something I neglected. This right up in here, right? Ew, that's a rusty mess, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and take some time and use um, various wire wheels and uh, wire brushes to go ahead and clean and descale this and give it the same treatment I gave everything else with a little bit of that Oswo and of course come back through and um, use some of that Eastwood frame coating or that uh, primer, that single stage epoxy um, uh, primer. So there we go. So that's what's gonna happen. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this thing into time-lapse and start yanking panels. And uh, hopefully, um, you know, you'll be able to see how I do it. And uh, again, the idea here is if I can do it, you can do it. And while I'm not a um, body or an auto body expert by any stretch of the imagination, right? Um, I'm just a hobbyist. I find that it's good to learn from people that have done it or at least by visually watching because that's one of the ways we do it, right? I'm a teacher, right? And that's what I do for a living. I, I, I'm a teacher by trade, okay? So my regular job to pay the bills, I educate others. And one of the best ways that we can learn is learn by example. We call it an I do, you do, we do, right? In the classroom. In other words, I'll show somebody how to do it, 
Then we all do it together. Then you're tasked with doing it on your own, right? So that's how this is gonna work. I'm gonna go ahead and show this in time-lapse and uh, get these body panels off. And uh, again, we are journalizing how things are done with Project Fast Fish. Now, if you're looking at the car behind me thinking, man, things look a little bit different than they did just in the other clip like a second ago, well, you're right. And I didn't want to bore the audience here and you guys with a lot of the tedious stuff that, well, needed to be done, right? Because what we're going to do next is twofold. One, um, I was debating about working on either the roof structure, right, or working on the trunk deck. And after test fitting the, well, trunk panel, the trunk floor, um, after test fitting the trunk floor, I decided that needs to be my next priority. So we're gonna go ahead and get that done. But first, let me show you what has been done, well, off camera. Now, the first thing that's real noticeable is the lack of the sail panel. I went ahead and removed that, and I decided not to show that removal process because it worked like everything else, right? I went ahead first and made the cuts around the side. You saw that earlier. And then I went ahead and cut the panel using my 90 degree air uh, grinder. Um, I'm sorry, my uh, four and a half inch uh, grinder and simply cut really close to this edge here, right? Now this edge is from the package tray and it actually goes up underneath of where the sail panel was. So I went ahead and cut that there and that really loosened it up. And from there, I was able to go ahead and take care of the welds that were on this point and this point. And of course, over here where this little extension panel is right here, this little brace, there was uh, weld points here and here. The air hammer made quick work of that. And of course, way off, I don't know if you could see it, over here and over there, right? And that panel was removed. From there, I was able to do a lot of extra descaling. Let me get this thing off the tripod. As you can see here, we have a lot of that rust and scale removed, all right? A lot of that had been done with the wire wheel and the uh, wire attachment on the grinder. And of course, our bracing has been removed. Went ahead and just retouched this with some undercoat. Of course, it's gotten dirty over the, year, over the time period because as you're working on these things, a lot of debris falls off, right? That's why the uh, tape over here is kind of all kind of uh, cruddy. And in fact, I went ahead and put this tape up on here simply because I was getting a lot of debris inside the rails and, you know, kept on painting and recoding. And it, I was like, all right, we're having enough of this. Let's go ahead and just simply tape those for the future. You'll also notice I went ahead and taped the line back there and that'll be used here shortly. And I'll explain that in just a few minutes, but that's where the seam is for the uh, trunk floor panel. And uh, that'll match right up against that, right? And of course, all this is ready to be uh, received with a coat of rust encapsulator or epoxy primer, my choice. Up here, went ahead and descaled this panel here, gave it the treatment of Osfo, and I might show an episode of that on a later date. If not, I'll go ahead and leave a link in the upper corner here. And uh, that's for a really, really good demonstration from the guys over at Carthage Classic Cars who give a real good um, uh, synopsis for descaling and using Osfo. Uh, they like to brush it on. I like to spray it on myself, but you know, each his own potato, potato, right? Went ahead and uh, got this ready for primer up here and just whacked that back into place because using the air hammer did create a little bit of distortion. So the roof skin will go there anyways before the glass, so we're good to go. Now all this over here will be taken care of on a later date and that'll be probably on the next episode where I take that on. So what we have over here is a couple of different things. Alrighty, this over here has all been scaled. Now, if you remember back in the, um, when I used and created the jig, again, I'll leave that link up there, right? Uh, when I created the jig, I used the holes already inside the frame and built into the frame. This is where the rear shackle goes, rear leaf spring shackle, to kind of hold this into place. So that's why I'm leaving it sit here. It's not just sitting here on a piece of metal where it can just be flopping around as is, right? 
And of course, back here, I went ahead and uh, taped this up because this is where it received the uh, zinc uh, weld through primer because I have a well panel that's gonna need to be welded on here in just a few minutes. In fact, let me go ahead and get that panel out and I'm gonna show you roughly how it's going to go into place. And I'm gonna show you the basic prep work that I'm gonna do right before um, I get rolling with this and get this trunk panel installed. Now I'm gonna install this over a couple of days because I'm working on this in the evenings and on the weekends, and this is gonna take a little bit of time to do. So don't expect to go out to your garage and try to crank this all out in the course of you know a couple hours. It's not gonna happen, all right? We can make it happen on YouTube, or look like it's happening on YouTube with the magic of video editing. So let me show you those panels real quick. One of the first things that'll need to be done is getting this bracket into place. Now it's not in here permanently because this is just a quick mock-up to see how things go in. Uh, there will be a little bit of room and I need to move this up a little bit because it needs to fit up flush with the trunk panel that'll be going right in here, right? So as you can see, it's not quite flat yet. And this panel will probably need to be kicked up once I get this welded into place. Now, when they put these in, this was a matter of just two quick spot welds. They put a spot weld here and a spot weld here, a spot weld there and a spot weld there. Again, two spot welds around each side and uh, it held it into place. I'll just use plug welds and boom, there we go. Although I have that spot welder, I do want this piece to be in there a little bit more securely because um, that spot welder is a simple uh, little point spot welder and I, wanna, uh, I don't have the big uh, diodes on there so I'm gonna do a little bit larger uh, plug weld for those. Now, once this is into place, I'll be able to go ahead and get the trunk panel on top here, pulling these into where they need to be at and boom, Bob's your uncle, right? You'll be able to get this all taken care of. Now, one of the things that I do need to do is go ahead and get this area prepped. So what I'm gonna do real quick is I'm gonna do this in kind of a, um, uh, well, fast motion here. And I'm gonna go ahead and set these trunk supports. Now these trunk supports, what they're designed to do is one, they hold in the fuel tank straps, right? Because your fuel tank straps go from this side around the fuel tank to the other side. Of course, it's looking at the bottom of the trunk. And of course, uh, you have one for the other side as well. I'm going to go ahead and get these set into place based off of known measurements. And um, there's also a great segment from the guys at Carthage. I'll go ahead and go ahead and leave that link as well that I'm going to pull my measurements from. But I know over here, I'm pretty close because of where it's sitting at. And this guy probably just needs to move over, probably just uh, about that much. And I'm probably really, really close on there. Now, what you're gonna see me do is go ahead and once I get this measured in, I'm gonna go ahead and make my alignment here, okay? And then I'm gonna go ahead and pull off all the EDP coating off the other side of the trunk panel or the trunk floor itself. And then give it a quick coat of, and get down to raw metal and then give it a quick coat of a weld through primer. On these guys, what I'm gonna do is I wanna do the, um, basically go through with my punch flange tool that I have from um, uh, available to me. And I'm gonna punch little holes right on the sides here about every two inches or so. And then I'll be able to plug weld those into place. Of course, I'll use various clamps and sheet metal screws to make sure that we are as tight as we can be. Because right now, just sitting in there, you can kind of see they're not quite flush, all right? They have a little bit of movement there. So I wanna make sure that those are all flush as possible. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this thing into a time-lapse. You're gonna see me work that a little bit. And I'm gonna do a few other quick mods to this thing as well because I, I made a couple mistakes when I put the uh, wells in. And I'm gonna go ahead and flatten these out so I can get my final test fit before I make my final uh, holes for what's gonna rest up against the rails over here. Now I've talked about this process a lot in the past, so I'll leave a link to a video where I do something similar. In fact, uh, if you go to the rear under seat pan, you can kind of see this process with the rear under seat pan as well. So let me go ahead and leave the link for the rear under seat pan installation and put this into fast motion for y'all and uh, let's get some work done. Real quick on the measuring here, you can see my white 
the paint marker and uh, where the trunk support will essentially line up. Now, some guys, and you know that link I left you above for Carthage, what they did is they used the holes, right? The uh, body holes, the drainage holes, if you will, uh, to measure out where their line should be for their supports. But what do you do when there's a discrepancy in the holes? Example, maybe the holes aren't exactly where they need to be uh, for the vehicle. Or maybe you have uh, an aftermarket vendor who didn't match them up right. Or maybe the pressing on the originals were a little bit off or what have you. How do you compensate for that? Well, you need to figure out your fixed points, right? Now, obviously, this is the old side, right? This is the old floor pan, the trunk pan, right? And here we have the side that was cut off. This is where the filler neck was, right? And you can see here with the plasma cutter, uh, I, I cut with the plasma cutter earlier on. And of course, you see the other side here. Now, when I measured here to here, all right, from this spot to this spot, I found a measurement of three and three eighths, which was, well, correct, right? And I could see that here, three, to three, uh, three and three eighths when I measured out from here to that spot right there, perfect. No worries. And I also saw that the, the line itself, okay, this is where it starts to go up and recede out, followed along where that filler neck was. Sure enough, that's what's happening here. Okay, you can see where that white line goes. Now, when I measured the backs over here, okay, yeah, I know this thing's got the little uh, plug in there, okay? But even compensating for the plug, when I measured here to here, I was getting a measurement that wasn't quite working out. In fact, you could see here where that dash was for the actual measurement, but that didn't work out because I noticed that the lines here, there's a line here, there's a little slight ridge here. This is exactly parallel. There's a little seam, or not seam, this seam right here where the metal meets the metal and this little uh, ridge right here meet up, okay? And that wasn't happening. So I made those parallel, okay? And then sure enough, it worked out, especially when I measured out the difference between this ridge here and this ridge here, okay? So effectively, I could line it up here let me get that on there, and we're golden, okay? Same thing happened over here. I tried using the hole up here with that, and it wasn't working out, but this little hole was. So I was able to use that, make sure I was parallel, and I was good to go. I also had to make sure that I was parallel between here and here. So here is my weld lines, right? So again, like I said before, I'm gonna go ahead and take off the EDP just around the edges here. I'm gonna leave my white lines as much as possible because that's important, okay? And then um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, punch, using the hole punch, the pneumatic punch, to punch the holes out about every two inches or so over here. Same thing over here. And then we're gonna get these into place. Now, as you're watching the video that's uh, playing uh, right for you right now, you'll see that uh, there were several times where I had to pull the trunk floor in and out and in and out and in and out because I was making small little adjustments. And 
Initially, when I got it in there, you know, I didn't put it flat because I just wanted to try to see if I can get it in there. When I say I put it flat, I didn't actually uh, use fasteners to put the uh, trunk deck, excuse me, the trunk floor into place. I, you know, I saved that for a little bit later. My initial idea was just to kind of get the test fit in there and kind of get uh, everything aligned and what have you. And I was having a problem where uh, the uh, alignment was off by about an eighth to a quarter of an inch. So much so that the holes that I had placed at the front of the trunk floor on the driver's side, they were fully, um, uh, you could clearly see where the underseat floor pan made it up with those. And on the other side, the uh, spot well or the plug wells were half exposed to the open air. So there was some slide and alignment issues. Additionally, when I looked at the back of the pan, you could clearly tell that it was shifted towards the back angle just a little bit. So that needed to be fixed. However, once everything was put back together and fastened down, everything lined up absolutely amazingly and um, I didn't capture any of the video for that right for this episode for this film that I'm doing right now however you can see the final results here after I get things put in so that's where things kind of leave us now right right now I am fixing to start welding things into place and we're going to start with the rear cross support let me show you this is where things are gonna start out at. I got this rear cross support in place. It is completely uh, evened out. And I found that it's a good measurement to use about two and a half inches here from this point to this point as a good uh, uh, reference point. In fact, um, just to compensate for any variances, I used multiple measuring points to make sure this was as even as possible across because you don't want this to be slightly off. Additionally, you still have alignment holes. I'll show you, I'm covering both alignment holes there's an alignment hole that goes into a bolt uh, back here that's used as a bump stop and you have some wiggle room here but me just being the kind of guy I am I went ahead and made sure everything was perfect right now on all the panels including the trunk panel over there I went ahead and pre-drilled everything so let me show you what I did real fast with this guy set into place you could see I pre-drilled everything I slightly ground off the um, uh, the EDP coating so I can get a good clean weld and of course both sides of this this the um, the uh, brace here and the bracket there and the underside of this bracket received um, slight coating of weld through primer, right? Went ahead and just uh, did some holes so I could just do some quick plug welds and get those down there. Now from the factory, they only had like uh, two plug welds each side. You could see I'm using three and four just because, you know, I want that extra security, right? Um, and there'll be some additional welds, um, welds up here to kind of help keep things in place as well. And I haven't ground this part down just yet. I'll do that after I get this set into place. And you can kind of see that uh, here as well. Additionally, I went ahead and just took a quick moment just to use um, on this back piece, this cross support back here. It received a coating of um, uh, rust encapsulator from Eastwood, as well as a coating of um, epoxy primer. And then on top of that, I went ahead and just on the top, used that uh, same spray on uh, urethane herculiner. Um, from that trunk deck or that trunk bed liner uh, that I used in the uh, firewall between the cowl and the firewall itself. So that should be well protected because that piece of metal, that trunk floor is gonna go right across into here, right? Additionally, you can see where things are taped up and ready to go into here. And in a few minutes, I'm gonna pull that tape off. Let me go ahead and show you what I did prep wise for the trunk floor. So this is the top of the floor pan. And as you can see, I uh, went ahead and where all the spot welds were created from the other side when I put the trunk supports in, I went ahead and just uh, took off the EDP coating there because it had burnt through, which is fine. That's no big deal there. Went ahead and took care of that while I could still have easy access to everything so I'm not crawling up in there to take care of that. And then each spot, all right, received a 5 16 5 16 hole for the plug weld. And I went ahead and traced those lines. You saw me do that, well, um, in the episode with the under seat floor pan. I did the exact same thing where I put the pan in place 
traced it out and uh, put these uh, plug welds in, right? Went ahead and ground that off so I can get a good, clean weld on that. There's no debris or dirt or foreign objects or foreign chemicals coming through that weld. I went ahead and did both sides. Back here, this is where it aligns up with that uh, cross support I was just showing you that's already been um, vice cl or clamped to the vehicle itself. And then up here is those plug welds I was telling you about a few minutes ago where I was having a hard time getting them to line up with my initial fit. Over here it fit fantastically, but over here it was a quarter off. So literally everything was covered, right? over here yet when i got over here everything was only kind of sort of covered right kind of partially exposed so that told me i was a little off assuming that the geometry of this is correct and of course you know it was you know uh these guys these panels are pretty reputable from amd so i went ahead and made sure that everything was awesome let me go ahead and show you the other side of this pan before we start the welding process Again, you can see where I traced those lines after I had it set and used that as my guide and put those 5 16 um, holes through for the plug welds. Now, I haven't prepped this side completely yet where I haven't ground off all the little spare metal so it sits off uh, those little fragments like this guy right here. Uh, so, it, you know, I need to take care of that so it sits flat there, right? Additionally, when I get back to here, I'm going to have to make sure this is clamped extra tight because of the um, trunk supports back here. As you can see, I also went ahead and just did a quick coating with um, some uh, urethane, um, I'm sorry, not urethane, but uh, epoxy primer there. And again, just a, just a light coat. I mean, I'm not trying to make this perfect down here right now. That'll come a little bit later on. It was just to kind of protect the exposed uh, metal. So let me go ahead and take care of these spots real quick. I'm gonna hit these with the um, little grinder um, attachment to kind of get these all flattened out. And then I'm gonna go ahead and spray underneath here with a weld through primer. And then I got one more thing I'd like to share with you before I start getting to work welding this thing back into place. Again, since this is the last time we're going to be able to see up in here, wanted to uh, showcase how nice and clean everything was in there. I uh, treated that with the Eastwood internal frame coat, and of course on um, the edges received a coat of that uh, zinc primer here, and uh, everything looks nice and good in there, so we can ensure that we're going to have more years of life from the inside of this. So now it's time to get to business and get the panel off. Now for those that are interested, I'm gonna go ahead and leave a complete parts list inside of the description. So if you click more in the description, you'll get past the description and you'll see the actual parts list. Now the cool thing is if you use those links and buy something from Amazon, right, and you buy the, the item that I'm advertising, those qualified purchases, I get a little kickback on. And if I get a kickback on it from this YouTube channel, I put it towards our projects. In other words, I put it towards Project Faxed Fish or put it towards making production better or putting the resources together to making things better. Effectively, I use all the money to help grow the channel, especially in its current state. So go ahead and, and if you see something you like, if you're wanting to know how we did something, go ahead and check out that parts list and uh, boom, you'll be taken care of. As the time-lapse recording finishes up, it's important to note that 
I didn't record getting all five sides of the spot welds done. And that's because, uh, well, quite frankly, I get one side done and it works pretty much the same way. Just clamp, 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 make sure everything's aligned up, so on and so forth. So what is more pertinent is showing you the end result. Check it out. Things turned out pretty decently. And as you can see, our alignment problems on that back seam were all fixed, right? That tape there was just to prevent some debris as I was grinding from getting inside those rails that had just been painted as I showed you earlier. Everything has been ground down. Uh, there's a couple little spots I gotta fill in with the uh, welder still. No big deal, just a little bit of flux in there and we'll be fine. I say flux, uh, a little bit of uh, weld wire, a little bit of molten metal and we'll be good to go. Uh, back here, everything was a matter of just hammering back down this little bar into place, this little piece that goes right here and then just clamping everything off to make sure it turned down decently. Over here, you can kind of see um, if it'll focus in there. Let's see if we can make this thing focus in. Um, this is where, these two right here, that's where the gas tank supports or the trunk supports go. Same thing over here. So just a little bit of a squeeze and a good solid weld. Uh, got some other welds in here as well. Just did the same process, just work the clamps down and from the center, excuse me, and then just kind of work them out. Over here, I used screws for the inside rail. So the rail right here, I used screws to keep everything down. And then over here, I used a combination of screws and clamps because I was still able to get clamps in this area, but had to use screws up in that area. Underneath here, had to use the um, uh, air belt sander to get to some of those welds to ground those down, no big deal. And the same thing went for over here. Looking back and far off, you can see that things turned out, well, pretty decently, and it's beginning to resemble a car again. And uh, really, really happy with the progress and really happy with the fitment that we got here. Now, of all the sides, this side fits the least perfect, but yeah, looking inside there, that is about as good as it gets for the home hobbyist, right? Looking over here, same thing. That's about as tight as it gets. If you want a closer look, let me change the camera angle there. And booyah. And of course, some seam sealer will go here along with the trunk extensions, etc. So things are looking pretty awesome on this end. Now, as far as the back is concerned, well, we're ready to start battening things up if we were worried about, well, from here backwards, but we're not there yet. So that gets me to the next part. What? is next for, well, Project Fast Fish. And you kind of saw me hint at it right there. The very next thing for Project Fast Fish is taking on this roof support structure. You see, this part needs to go. The top bow brace needs to go. There's a little bracket here that needs to be replaced. There's a bracket that goes up here to here that needs to be replaced. And there's a bracket in here that needs to be replaced. Additionally, the center support needs to go. Now, if you're looking around, some of the other metal structure, right, needs a few small patches and repairs, and I still need to finish up this area in here, right? So that is what's gonna be next on Project Fast Fish. Not too far away from spring break. Again, I'm in the education business. I work in public education. So we get spring break. And that means I can focus and dedicate almost the whole week to working on it. And I got a couple weekends where I'm tied up. I got something going on personally next weekend. And of course I got the Gator Nationals, which we always go to every year, especially with pop. That's coming up uh, the weekend after that. And then that following weekend, we start spring break. Uh, that also doesn't mean I'm gonna be standing by idly. I got a couple things I gotta finish up as far as grinding and so on and so forth. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take care of one side of the vehicle with those support structures. And then I'm gonna show you how I did it with the other side, because that's the basis of the show. If I can do it, you can do it, and I'm gonna show you how I did it, so that either you can learn from my mistakes, or you can say, hey, hey, that guy did a good job. I'm gonna do it like that guy, right? Now there's one more thing I wanna tell you about, and that is an upcoming project that my brother and pop are taking on by themselves. You see, I got Project Fast Fish, and um, uh, dad has the elephant motor that was built, but 
we just can't let that motor just sit on the stand and look pretty, right? We got to put it in something to see if we can get some, uh, well, good times out of the uh, quarter mile on it. And we have a little project in mind. So you don't want to miss that segment on Mike's Motor Works. Look for Project Slayton. That's Project Slayton. Uh, so you don't want to miss that and uh, check out that whole thing as it comes together and you don't want to miss the announcement. So on behalf of Mike's Motor Works and Project Fast Fish, thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you on the next episode.